What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Boogie Two Ninety Eight coming at you live once again through the power of the internet, and this is my last couple of boxes of double masters. Let me know if you guys think I should order more. Uh, this is my second week of doing Magic Mondays, Magic the Gathering Mondays, in which I talk about Magic the Gathering, I unbox Magic cards, that kind of thing, and I'm pretty excited to let you guys know that a lot of the cards you're going to see me open today, you're going to be able to purchase directly from me on the whatnot app i don't know if you guys are familiar with this app but it is a live auction website you're going to find the link down below if you want to check it out um if you've ever watched like qvc that type of thing you can log in there and watch influencers and creators like retro rick or myself get in there and like sell parts of their collection and there's so many magic cards i've opened over the years that i'm just ready to get rid of including signing those cards um, I'm probably going to do like a custom token. I was thinking like a 1-1 one -one human token that has the gun meme, for example, on it. I think that would be really funny. Stuff like that. I, this is something I'm going to try. Will I stick with it? I don't know. But I do know that I have a ma magic collection worth a ridiculous amount of money. And you've seen my cube. You know that I'm setting on all of these cards. Why am I still setting on them? When they can go into somebody else's collection and bring people joy, I think that's a great way to do it. And it's a pretty good way to get a deal. I've been watching a lot of auctions on whatnot, even bought a couple of things. And I will say that I think it's an interesting way to make a little bit of money, but it's also an interesting way to get stuff for cheap. Here's Spark Mage's Gamut, Tuscard Captain. A Laundry the Dust Grows, that's amazing. Hostage Taker, again, amazing. Double Masters is such a loaded set. I love, I love this set. I know I complained the last time I unboxed. I complained mostly about the price. Magic the Gathering has built up such incredible equity over the years. The ability to... Oh, that's a beautiful Blood Artist. Um, so many wonderful cards that they could reprint. And I wish they reprinted them more often. And if they are going to do reprint sets like this, maybe don't put Ashenmore Legion or Bedlam Reveler because these are cards that literally are so much easier to get a hold of. Make it the more expensive, rarer cards, especially if you're going to charge the price for these packs. I often wonder, and I, call me crazy, this sounds crazy, but I got an idea. Send this to Wizards of the Coast, send this to Gavin, send this to Mark Rosewater. What if we had, I don't know, a reprint set come out every single year? Oh, wonderful. Teferi's Protection? Wow. Aether Snipe? Wow. Anger of the Gods? Borderless? Nice. Forbidden Orchard? Um, but what if we had a reprint set that came out every single year? Okay, bear with me. And we would reprint some of the best cards in Magic every single year. Sure, uh, Burning Tree Emissary, maybe uh, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile. Young Pyromancer would be a great choice. Deranged Assistant, maybe. Panharmonicon could be an interesting choice. A lot of these cards that are in this. Hydroid Crisis, maybe not, maybe too little powerful. But And these cards would not just go directly into Legacy like these cards, or Modern, or Commander, or whatever. Um, they would go into, hear me out, Standard. Because not a lot of people are playing Standard anymore because it's a rotating format. But if you brought in a lot of their favorite reprints, they might. They might actually get involved again, right? What if Assassin's Trophy was in Standard? That... And you could put some of the most interesting reprints into Standard every year. You could reprint cards that are fundamental to the game. Maybe like Rampant Growth. Maybe they could be core to the game. What would you call a set like that? I don't know. Make it entirely full of reprints. Valuable reprints like Coiling Oracle. Do cool stuff with it like foils and, and alternative arts. And just... It could be good for stand... Uh, you, you, you might be getting what I'm putting down here. Making fun of the fact that they do not do core sets anymore, and I really wish they did. And I wish they did core sets the way they used to when I was coming up, where it was just full of interesting and fun cards to play with that directly went into standard. I think that could bring standard back. I, I really do. I, I miss playing standard. I built a couple of standard decks on um, Arena recently, and it's just not as fun as Pioneer... It's just not as fun as Historic Brawl, though I do not play regular Historic because of the Alchemy cards. I definitely am not a fan of Alchemy. I know some people are, and if you are, Smothering Tide is a nice hit. If you are, that's great. City of Brass is a nice hit. Um, if you're a fan of Alchemy, great. I, I'm all for it. But if I wanted to play Hearthstone, I'd play Hearthstone. Or I guess I'd play Spellslingers, which is that new app uh, Magic just made. Haven't downloaded it yet, but I've heard good things. 
But I want to play Magic, and I want to play digital Magic with cool graphics, and that's why I've, I, I originally bought so hard into Historic, and I'm really just don't like the effect Alchemy has had on Historic, but it's still a really good game. It's still really fun. I do recommend, if you've ever watched these videos and you've thought about getting into Magic, Magic the Gathering Arena is the way to do it. MTGArena.com. You can download the game. Right now, you can download the app today. You can start playing. There's a really good tutorial. Maybe on next Magic Monday, if I'm out of cards to unbox, I will walk you through the tutorial of Magic the Gathering Arena, and we can all learn to play together. Would that be something? I've seen a lot of people asking, where's the tutorial on how to play? Why haven't you made one? Why won't you teach me how to play? And I often say, Arena does such a good job. Why would I be the guy that tries to walk you through it, right? But then there's other content creators like The Professor and these other really great con uh, content creators who make better content than I make. And they've already made these tutorials and they look so much better than anything I could ever make. Their videos look so good. Speaking of the WhatNot app and speaking of The Professor, I don't know if you guys saw this, but WhatNot did this... Um, $100,000 Magic the Gathering event. That's a nice little hit. You basically, they let uh, one random dude play some games of Magic against Post Malone for $100,000. Yeah, if you don't know that, Post Malone is a huge Magic the Gathering fan. He recently bought an $800,000 card, Black Lotus. True story. That's, you can Google that. That's real. He admits to it. But he went to this event and uh, lost to the guy who only started playing Magic four days ago. Monetary, monastery Mentor. I really want the border list of that for my cube. I really, I might should just buy the single or trade for it or use some of that whatnot money that I might end up getting if you guys buy some cards to buy those cards I need for the rest of my cube. But it was a really interesting event. I'm glad to see whatnot doing something like that for the community. It's one of the reasons I'm interested in getting into it. Now, let's talk about the downside. They spent a lot of money, specifically $100,000, plus whatever they had to pay post, plus whatever they paid to fly out some of these huge magic professionals, Reed, Duke, and who else is there? Brian Kibler, the professor was there. I can't imagine how much money they spent putting this together. And they all, I think, that, I think the event happened out in LA, because obviously post is not going to travel for you. you. You travel for post. But... Um, why wasn't Kenrith, why wasn't the other buy a box promos put in here? This one was, which is great. I'm glad they reprinted it so you can get a non-foil uh, version if you prefer non-foils. Really feel like they should have put Kenrith and some of the other buy a box promos in here. A anyway, completely different topic. Um, this is what it's like when I'm unboxing magic cards and thinking about magic and talking about magic. I'm just going to, I'm going to be all over the place. I'm not like these other content creators that know what they're talking about when they sit down. Today I'm going to talk to you about this. Nope. No, nope, I'm just going to let my brain go. I'm probably going to tell personal stories about the time I peed in a creek or I, I don't know. Just get, get used to it. That's how I make magic content. But, but anyway, so they're doing this tournament. And see, here's some open criticism to the guys at Whatnot if you see this video. The, they, it was not very clear. Oh, Call Against Command. Borderless. Nice. Ashen Rider. I also really like the etched frames that we should get out of the collector box. I really like those a lot. The stream was pretty hard to see. I felt like, number one, they had a play area where you could see the decks they were playing and the cards they were playing. The problem was it chat was overlaid, and I couldn't figure out how to turn chat off. Ooh, I didn't know Earl was in the set. He's a cool little Voltron commander. I really like him a lot. Rukthar, another really fun card in Commander. Ooh, for Borderless Mold Drifter as well. Another Shadowborn Apostle. I need to pull out all the Shadowborns. They're so good. I really want to build that. Uh, I really want to build that Commander deck. But besides the fact that it looked like it was being filmed on a potato, it was great seeing Jimmy Wong and the Professor hanging out. I haven't seen those two in the same room in a while. It was nice seeing um, Post Malone play this dude. The dude who won the contest. They held a contest on the app. It was so popular, the app actually crashed. They had so many people trying to get into it. But the person that got randomly selected had never played a game of Magic. So they flew him out and set him down and allowed Reed Duke, a Magic the Gathering pro player, to teach him the ins and out of the games, the ins and out of the decks that they were going to be using. And still, 
four days of crash courses from a Magic Pro is not enough to, to really let you beat Post Malone. So having watched this live stream, I'm just going to say, I think Post... I think Post didn't want the money. I don't think Post wanted to win. I think he wanted this dude to win. And in my opinion, I think Post threw it. Especially in that final game. I really feel like Post just was, was just letting that dude win. And that's okay. That's okay. I, I don't want to be another one of these people that just kiss Post Malone's ass. Go put it in the same room with me and I'm going down on my knees, okay? And I'm too fat to get on my knees. I will kiss Post Malone's ass. Mostly because he's a magic player, but also because his music's okay. I'm an old man. I don't listen to that type of music, but his music's all right, for sure. Um, but he lost with such grace and such kindness. And he was funny and he was cool. And I do know people that know him and have played magic with him and hung out with him. And they all say that he's exactly as cool in real life as he is um, any of the rest of these other times. I love that. Oh, there we go. Borderless Sensei's Dividing Top. There is a really good hit. Nice. What else is in the Necrotic Ooze? Um, I love it when a, a content creator turns out to be as good as you hope they will be. I would like to think that everybody that's ever met me in real life has had a good impression. I don't know that they have or not because I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm kind of an idiot. I've heard nothing but positive things, but maybe there's somebody out there who had some bad experiences. But I've also never heard, ooh, foil, Vincer, nice. Never heard a bad thing about Post Malone. Not a single bad thing. I mean, he is a rock star, so, you know, he's got that rock star lifestyle with the face tattoos and probably drinks a little too much and probably does his fair share of the, the alternative drugs like the marijuanas and stuff. That's not a bad little box there. That's not a bad little box. Let's see. Let's go through here and look at our hits real quick. That Vincer's a nice hit. That Divining Top is a very nice hit. Oh, I hate these Legions. I hate that they're in here. I, I know that they've got to pad out these types of sets. They can't all be ridiculous reprints. But why can't they? Why can't they all be ridiculous reprints? It's not like this set is a core set getting printed into standard. I know, because it's got to feel like gambling. It's got to feel like gambling, right? Concordant Crossroads, very nice hit. Like a $20, $30 hit. Yeah, I don't think this box paid for itself, folks. I really don't. Dragon Lord Salumgar is one of my mythics. was not great. Monetary, Monastery Mentor, I like the card, but I don't think it's worth that much. Anguish on making its anguish every time I open that card because they've reprinted it so often. You see what I'm saying? Thought Scour. Oh, City of Brass. Smothering Tithe is nice. Yeah, having paid three fifty for this box, I don't think we made our money's worth. I genuinely don't. Oh, the foil assassin or the borderless assassins uh, is pretty nice. Borderless anger of the gods not worth much. The foil to fairies protection that's probably worth quite a big chunk of change. So did we get our money back here, uh, Lindra? Probably not. I think we probably lost fifty or seventy-five bucks here. Maybe we'll get lucky with this collector box though. But all right, give me a second to clean up, and we'll move on to this collector box. Anyway, what I was saying is I'm really I love it when content creators turn out to be just as good as they are. Markiplier was a fantastic person, and I'm glad to hear the post is just as good of a person in real life. All right, let's focus on these collector boosters. No more story time. Too much money on 275, 275 bucks. With $75 a booster, something ridiculous like that. Aether Snipe, Last Breath, Experiment One, Rampant Growth, River, Hoopy, Thought Scour. Mole Drifter, Rakdos Canarium, Mentor of the Meek, Surgical Extraction, Ooh, Grim Flayer, eh, is he Mythic in this set, or is that rare? I feel like that's a Mythic, I don't feel like that's a good Mythic, but that's oh, okay, that's okay. Boar Tusk Liege is our etched, alright, let's hope for that Textured Eldrazi, Textured Eldrazi, Textured Eldrazi, Bloom Tender, Foil borderless room tender is nice. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, mm, once again, probably not getting my $75 value here. Let me remind you, especially now, with as much double masters has been printed, do not go out and buy boxes unless you really, really enjoy the cracking. Leave the cracking up to the content creators 
buy singles. Buy singles from your local gaming store. If you can't buy them there, you can buy them from TCG Player, which facilitates local gaming stores and small creators. Or you can buy them on Whatnot from me. It's up to you. It's a good way to get cards that you that you want and need without having to, honestly, gamble. Cruel Turf. Bloodbraid Elf. Dimmer Aqueduct. Another Bloodbraid Elf. Anger of the Gods Foil. Hmm. Hmm. Feels weird. Weird feeling foil. Colgon's Command, second time today with the Borderless. Allosaurus Shepherd Etched Foil. Very nice. Very nice. That'll go directly into my Elves deck. I do have a Commander Elves deck. Black Green Elves. Okay, what's our... Is it the Etched Eldrazi that I've been looking for? No. But it is going right into the cube. I definitely wanted to replace that Season Pyromancer with this one. Wow. We wow wow. Wow. Borderless foil excellent hit excellent hit oh 30 years of opening magic cards since 1994 i've been opening magic cards and i still get that good feeling oh it's one of the very few things that gives me that good feeling anymore i've tried it all i tried food i tried legal substances i tried women i tried massages i tried i tried everything but magic cards one of the very few things in the world that still gives me the tinglies and it sure does. Good lord. Go for the throat. Mentor of the Meek. Unearth. Here we go. Ooh. Oopsie. Azurus Chancer. Spell Pierce. Seeker of the Way. Oh, Rafika the Many. Ugh. Bad Borrowed of Spoil. Ugh. Ugh. Not a great commander. Now, I wish he gave everybody. Again, it's nice that he gives Double Strike, but I wish he gave everything uh, Exalted. Mimeoplasm Borderless. I really want to build the Mimeoplasm. He's such a unique, such a unique card. So weird. Really want to build that one. Thistledown Leash. Etch Foil. Come on. Make it up with the Etch Foil. Make it up with the... Oh, Foil Borderless Hardened Scales. That's straight up a, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a modern deck? Nice. Nice. Okay. All right. Good packs so far. Me, I'd say mid packs. These have been mid packs. By the way, when I'm done with this pack, stick around. We're going to talk about Magic a little bit longer. I'm going to talk about the new set that's coming out. So if you want to bear with me, we'll talk about some of the cards we've seen spoiled and the hints that Mark Rosewater dropped today. Here we go. Might of Old Crosa, Relief Captain, Quasili Pride Mage, Unearth, Traveler's Amulet, Sprouting Thrynax, Eternal Witness, Monetary Swift Spear, Coiling Oracle, Burning Tree Emissary, Foil Mole Drifter, Grave Crawler Foil, Nice... Glimpse the Unthinkable Borderless. I've never been a huge fan of Mill, but I know that this card is played for sure. And you can hit yourself with it to get the right cards in your graveyard. Is that going, Dredge, I wonder? Absent Ascendancy is our Edge Foil. Here is probably my last Commander pack. So this is my last chance at a Textured Foil. There was only a 3% chance of getting one anyway. So it was just not going to happen. But maybe it did. Keep your fingers crossed. Here we go. Etch foil? Oh no, Cedrus the Traitor King. Oh, you traitor, you bulk rare. I mean, he's, he's fun, but no. Oh. oh, all right. Well, as far as collector boxes go, that was okay. That was okay. A few hits in here for sure. But don't forget, um, let me open the pack so you don't have to. All right, let's talk about the new magic set that's coming out Dominaria United. So I'm really excited that we're going back to Dominaria. This is what they're calling another nostalgia set, where we go back to some old school sets. And in this case, this is the plane that basically always existed in Magic for the first five, six years. Not Arabian Nights, but Antiquities and Cold Snap and Alliances and, and Ice Age and, and, and Wrath Cycle and Weatherlight. All of those sets took place on Dominaria. And first off, every time we go back to this plane, we went back to it not too long ago, but every, last time we went to it, it had this historic stained glass fill because so many years had passed inside the plane. So I love, 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 love these stained glass basic lands. And I want to be honest with you, the, the full art basic lands that are coming out these days make the old ones just not as cool. They're just, they're, I'm sorry, they're just not as cool, in my opinion. Uh, but they are still kind of cool. And then we've got a few card spoilers. Um, probably the most interesting thing I think they're doing is these Legends from the Legend set re-envisioned. I think that's a really cool idea. Everybody remembers Ramiro's Diapetro, right? But it was a terrible card. 
didn't do much of anything, wasn't worth the mana investment. So getting a second chance at some of these, even though these are just the uncommon ones, I, I think it's a great idea. I love that they're doing this, giving you a second chance to play these cards in Commander. I think it's beautiful. Then we've got uh, Magic 30th Anniversary is doing this really cool thing where they're doing these promo cards at your local store, including these old reprints in a old school border. And you know, look, Finhorn Elves is going to get played somewhere. Sarah Angel, probably not going to get played much of anywhere. It's just a nostalgia bait. Ball Lightning, probably not going to get played anywhere. Just nostalgia bait. Doesn't mean it's not a cool card to get. It's not. It doesn't mean it's not a cool card to show up to your local card store just to get your hands on. I would do it. I, I, I want all of these cards. Look, at there's the 1993 card of Sarah Angel. 95 is Finhorn Elms. Uh, Ball Lightning uh, from 1994. That was from the dark. And then when it comes to the actual cards that are in the set, I think this set is looking pretty powerful. We have the Shivan Devastator, which is a giant flying haste dragon uh, with an X spell. I mean, they don't really put X spells in the standard anymore. Maybe if they did, it would be a little more interesting than standard, but whatever, that's fine. That's fine. Um, maybe that's some sort of core set like we mentioned earlier. But this is a pretty good... I think if your opponent's tapped out, this thing's going to do a lot of tremendous damage. And it also... Fireball doesn't stick around. Disintegrate doesn't stick around. Shiv and Dra Devastator does. Evolve Sleeper, this is one of those evolving cards that we've seen, like um, the card we opened earlier, Figure of Destiny. So that's a really cool thing. We're obviously not going to get Land of War ba Elves back in standard again, which kind of stinks. I mean, like, maybe we will. I guess it's not an impossibility. But it does look like we're getting Land of War Loam Speaker, which is a two casting cost, one three that taps to add mana of any one color. Also animates your lands, which is a very druidic ability. I like that. Then there's this series of kicker spells. Kicker's coming back just like the last time in Dominaria. This time it's off-color kicker, like the Volvers from back in the time. I feel like, again, all of these cards are just really... Interesting. So we're actually going to get to see what the actual set looks like starting later this week. Maybe we'll go over all of the spoilers later, but so far, everything we've seen right now, this is true nostalgia bait. If you're an old head like me, if you've been playing this game since the beginning of time, if you're one of those people that are going to Magic 30 or you're buying the virtual package or whatever, if you're somebody who's looking to get back into Magic because of these videos... This might be a great set to do it. I hope it's valuable. I hope it's got some high power. Some of these cards are pretty interesting at the very least. And the last Dominaria cycle was a very fun set, even though it didn't have a bunch of ridiculously expensive cards. The cards that were in there, I loved them. So, so let's hope that this set is as awesome as the last Dominaria, but as awesome as the previous Dominaria as well. That's my opinion. I'm sticking to it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this Magic Monday. Check me out on the WhatNot app if you get the chance. And until then, guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon.